Um, thank you all for coming here. Uh, my name is Sanal Zukan, and today I will talk to you about EDE, Allied Desktop Environment. Uh, just to check in, okay. This is quick outside, oh, oops. <laughs> Something is happening with this computer. Okay, just check. Okay, it's working. Okay, this is a quick outline of what I'm going to talk about. Um, I will give you a short introduction about EDE, why we need another desktop environment, uh, standards EDE supports, uh, some background things we are using, and what we are planning for the future. Uh, who am I? I'm ED maintainer and developer since 2005. I was FLTK developer. Some of you probably know about FLTK project. And I'm hacking things here and there. And this is the place of my blog where you can check things I'm working on. Well, this is a screenshot of currently most popular environments. And you will recognize some of them. Probably you already use some of it. Maybe. You switch to plain window manager and things like that. But let me see why we need another desktop environment, light one. First of all, I will talk here in context on, of, on two quite popular, the big one, desktop environments. First, they are, they are actually quite hard to install and compile. Have you ever tried to compile KDE or GNOME from source code? And you know the problems you will have. Actually, I tried. I never managed to compile Qt from source code, so you know. Uh, as I said, they are actually bloated. They require a hardware acceleration. Isn't that a problem? You actually, besides huge amount of memory, you need a hardware acceleration. That is thing requiring by games. You basically need a gaming platform, gaming, gaming computer just to run these things and to probably surf the web send some emails or write a document. And the worst of all, they are quite, quite hard to hack. For example, why KDE developers need so long time just to fix uh, plasmoid crashes? They probably know about that. So in recent years, there is increased interest about light desktop environments. So we have some here like XFC, like LXDE, recently Razer QT became quite popular, but there are still one pro major problem about them. They are built on bloated base, um, like JTK or QT. Let me see some comparison size. For example, plain JTK demo is using this size of memory, or QD bus viewer, which is plain QT application. Now I'm just comparing here uh, disk usage. Some of you will probably say, okay, disk today is quite cheap, but if you are going to go on embedded devices, on devices with, um, let's say, micro SD card, this can be a problem. So, can we have something lighter? Yes. First of all, we will ditch Qt, we will ditch JTK, and for God's sake, we will not use X Windows API. We will use FLTK. What, what is actually FLTK? FLTK, or pronounced full tick, is a fast light toolkit. It is only GUI toolkit, which means it follows true Unix philosophy. You are using only what you need. If you're having your own, for example, specific networking library, you can use it without problems. The second one thing is that it's full asynchronous. You get a lot of places where you can register uh, callbacks, and at some point, you can receive events. Also, there is OpenGL like stacking API. You simply, put, you simply create widgets by creating begin, uh, put widgets, create end. I will later uh, have specific talk about FL Fultic uh, in cross-desktop room, so you can ask questions there. 
And the best of all, there is no, almost no dependency except uh, operating system API. Let me see some sizes. Fluid is actually a GUI designer that ships with uh, Fultic. And it's not a trivial application. It can do a lot of things. So this is the memory usage. This is the sizes of all of FLTK libraries that comes with it. And the best of all, they are built with debug information. So let me build a desktop environment on that toolkit. It is called EDE. EDE is actually uh, a desktop environment with, with known desktop paradigm. There is no reinventing the wheel. We are not trying to create desktop for tablets, for small devices with small screens. We are just creating desktops for old hardware and for devices which will be shown on your plain monitors. The best of all, it is uh, already portable on some um, devices like Xbox, on some constrained operating systems like Minix, and etc. Cetera, et cetera. How it looks like? Well, it looks like, like we all know, plain desktop environment. So you have desktop, you have icons, you have taskbar, start button, etc. etc. Some of you will probably ask why I'm trying to emulate that other operating system for that other big company. Well, Mr. Dali said once, if we don't want to imitate, we will produce nothing actually. So let me see quickly what are the main features of EDE. As I said, it's full tick powered. We depend only on plain API, OS API. We developed our own library called EDE lib. And at some point, we can have EDE compile op op optionally with things like Dbus, like UPower, HAL, and et cetera, et cetera. So we support a lot of things like standard window manager hits, icon themes. This all means that if you don't like shipped window manager, you can replace with your own if is uh, free desktop.org compatible. There is also support for auto start locations, etc. Let me see some sizes comparison. Desktop with icons using the same amount of memory as system D. Notification demo is using the, almost the same amount of memory as syslog demo. And maybe the worst of all of thing, the worst of all of them is panel with plugins because maybe plugins is loading all those shared library is using a little bit more memory, but the best of all, all things are compiled with debug information. So how we managed to do that? First of all, it is built using C++. We are not using advanced C++ things like STL, like template abuse. We are just trying to use plain C API trying to use C preprocessor as much as possible. And as a result, we are getting uh, that it compiles quite fast. It works on older compilers. And it creates smaller libraries. It also can be built without runtime information, which means you will get even smaller binary files. Let me see quickly about EDLib. EDLib is actually drop-in replacement for Fastlight Toolkit. It's just continuation of that same library. For example, if you have a menu that is using a full tick actually menu, you just replace it with EDLib, EDLib menu and you will get instantly icons from icon themes inside of it. So it is just designed to be easily replaced current F F FLTK, FLTK code. So also, there is Dbus full C++ Dbus binding, and there is also API for icon themes. Uh, it is quite configurable, and the best of all, it gives you a full scheme implementation inside of it. And I will mention also the, just to check the time, I will also mention the themes we are trying to use inside EDE. Actually, teams are much more different than you get used to it. So there is no MVC things. You don't write teams in one language. 
how they will behave in different language. Uh, we are not trying to use things like XML or JSON and stuff like that. We are trying to write everything inside Scheme because in Scheme you will get all, all, all those Lispers out there will recognize it. In Scheme, the code is data and the data is code. Also, we are trying to support foreign teams. Uh, for example, our default window manager is PECVM. So at some point we will try to uh, integrate PECVM teams inside global teaming engine of EDE. So how teaming looks like inside of EDE? Well, you have, for example, this is a quick example how it looks like and how it behaves. For example, you have some metadata, you have some function that it works, and at the bottom you have actual real data. This is not code, this is data. But at some point, you have a function call. Well, this is quite hard to achieve with other languages except Lisp or Scheme. And what we are trying to, what are actually our plans for future? Uh, to have a fast file or web browser. There are some already proposals that we try to integrate Dillo web browser which is built on FLTK, but the problem with Dillo is that it it's, does not have JavaScript support, so all modern browsers will not work. Uh, we are also trying to, we will try actually to add some platform independent package manager, but thanks to package kit, it, this is much more easier today. Also, there is a plan to integrate um, IPC from Plan 9. Well, the reason for this is because <coughs> DBus we are trying to use more and more is actually quite heavy and it's quite hard to port, port it on uh, foreign platforms. For example, you can't run DBus on Minix because Minix does not have threading support and DBus cannot run without threads. So at some point we will try to remove DBus and replace it at least for internal communication. And we will try at some point to integrate more and more scheme code to provide, let's say, small talk-like features. The reason is this: for this is to give you uh, a feeling of a live desktop where you can change in runtime things, where you can uh, probably create at some point image of the whole desktop where you can, uh, let's say, evolve desktop over the time. So. Uh, this is was quick, almost a minute. So this is, um, these are actually the links where you can check things about the project. This is my mail. If you have some questions, you can mail me or you can catch me on the hall after the talk and that's it. Thank you very much.